Hi guys and welcome to Log Cabin Gaming. Today we've got a special tutorial for you. The Mega Boss Gordrak on his Moor Crusher Big Teeth. This tutorial will be split over three videos, uh, each detailing how I painted the Mega Boss, the Moor Crusher and the base separately. You can find the link for the other two videos in the description below. In order to make sure you don't miss any other videos we post, please subscribe and enable notifications to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Now that that's out of the way, let's get cracking. Okay, so you've got your more crusher, you've got your base. So what I wanna do is I wanna lift, I kind of wanna build something up. Um, so he's kind of, he looks like he's stepping down uh, some kind of crevasse or some cliffs or something or some stones. So what I've got is I've got these um, cork tiles, not tiles, I've got these cork um, coasters. A couple of quid from uh, Amazon, I think you get six for two quid or three quid. Um, I've used them before on my base, so you just tear them off and you get this nice kind of jaggedy uh, structure. So I think what I want to do is maybe do a layer of three. I think that will work. So we have three on his back feet, one on his front foot. So one on this one and then none on that one. It should kind of blend nicely. So we're going to do three in one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear these because they've got this smooth edge. You kind of just want to rip them off like that, basically. And then I end up just getting a uh, container, putting all my little tears in there because um, they could be useful for something else. But basically, I am just going to go around tearing this off. Okay, so when you're happy with that, you can't see any smooth bits, any round bits like we can there. Um, just going to take that off, tear that up, and then uh, stick it all down exactly how it was. Now that the glue's all dry, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some PVA glue and I've also got this medium grey ballast uh, that I just picked up from my um, hobby craft shop. It's from a company called Woodland Scenics. It can be any kind of ballasty sand. 
I'm just gonna squeeze some glue all over. So what I wanna do is I wanna cover all the cork, at least the flat bits. And either you can get an old brush and wipe it in, or I've got a bit of sponge here, or you could use your finger, just get down and dirty. Spread it all over. Make sure you've got all the flat areas at the very least. Okay. Then, actually what's a good idea is to put like a collecting tray or something underneath. So I've just got, <clears throat> uh, that's the lid for my um, wet palette. So I'm gonna open this bag, we're just gonna lightly sprinkle this kind of sandy ballast all over where we've glued. PVA glue will stick to the surface. Now you could do this with um, uh, the con uh, sorry the technical paints like Armageddon Dunes or Astro Granite or what have you. But oh, I just feel it would take forever to do it that way because um, it's quite such a it's such a big area. Doesn't matter if you've missed any areas because after we prime it really be able to tell because the model's going to sit on it but if you wanted to you could then squeeze a few bits here and there. If I get an old tatty brush you can poke that in and then just use the older uh, whatever you've missed here. Right what I'm going to do I'm going to leave that now 24 hours to dry just to be on the safe side got it there because we're going to be covering that with sand anyway but if you want to you can wipe that while the glue's still wet okay i'm gonna leave that 24 hours till the pva is all completely dry then we're going to come back with the pva glue now dry your base should look a bit like this Okay, so the next step is to spray the whole base chaos black. But before we do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get a bit of Astro Granite Debris, which is the texture paint. Now it can be any, any of the texture paints um, because we're gonna spray it all chaos black. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build up uh, a little area just so it doesn't look uniform here. Um, I know roughly when the Moor Crusher is sitting on this, he's gonna be over here. So I'm not too fussed about that because the ma majority of his body will cover it. But what I'm gonna do is just create a little kind of stippling effect to make it look a bit more rocky and jagged over here. Right, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna make it all, you know, like this random pattern around. Um, and then when it's dry, I'm going to give it a good couple of hours to dry. Uh, I'm going to spray it Chaos Black um, and then we will be back. So I've kind of got a bit carried away, but you can see I've done quite a lot of the, um, the base like that. But I actually think that looks better now. I quite like it, the way it goes from the rough to the smooth. And we'll be able to put like grassy tufts and stuff on there just to make it different but we got like a two-tone texture on that so yeah now I am going to go well actually wait for it to dry but I'm going to go and um, spray it chaos black uh, also the technical paint is a good area to kind of pick out all the little bits basically you don't want any of the flat cork to be showing it's okay for the sides here because they're kind of jagged and torn so that's going to help the effect that we want yep yeah, next step 
wait for it to dry and then I'll spray it black. All right, so we're back. So we sprayed the um, the base Chaos Black. Um, so you can see there's kind of a fine texture gradient between the texture paint and the ballast sand that I used. Doesn't really make too much difference. It's uh, down to you what you prefer. Right, so I'm gonna get some Mechanica Standard Gray. I've got a large dry brush. So what I'm gonna do, some paint on the brush and you just wipe it off you know same old same old for dry brushing then we are just going to apply a nice dry brush of Mechanica standard grey over all the cork all right when that's done down to you but I'm going to uh, just apply a lighter dry brush of Dawnstone straight over the top but um, this one's going to be a bit more selective we're just going to maybe hit towards the edges of it we're just picking out the higher bits Probably where you did your texture paints, actually, and the edges here. You can kind of see you've got a nice difference between the, uh, the ballast and the texture paint. Unfortunately, some of the ballast is coming off, but you shouldn't be able to see that once we've put the old more crusher on it. Right, final bit, final highlight, administratum grey. This is just really for the very top bits. Highest ridges there. Go towards the edges. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take some Inky by Darkness. And I've got a large base brush, and I'm just going to kind of cover a this area here, this is where I want my swamp to be. So I'm just gonna mark it out roughly. And um, we're gonna be covering, or going up to it with more texture. So you don't need to be too accurate on this right now. I'm just roughly gonna paint where you think it's gonna be. You wanna get a nice solid base cover of this. Um, so you can't see the Uh, primer underneath. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Um, maybe do a second coat and then we'll be back. Now that the Inky by Darkness is dry, you can kind of see we've got this nice bluey green effect. Um, I did, ended up doing about three coats of this just only because I liked how rich it was getting. So I just kept uh, layering it on once it was dry. Next, I'm going to take some Wag Flesh. Um, and basically, I'm kind of just making this up as I go along. So if you haven't got these exact colours, it's not really going to be a problem. Um, I just kind of want to get a bluey, greeny, murky, swampy colour. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just start from the outside. Go it in. And I'm going to leave the Incubi Darkness in the middle, and that's kind of where it's going to be um, deepest. So that's why it's going to be darker. Okay, and then I'm also, just to help that transition, 
I'm gonna get some more Inky by Darkness on my brush. I'm just gonna feather that in. So we're gonna have Inky by Darkness in the middle mixed with wild flesh kind of towards the middle and then feathering out to wild flesh on the outside i'm just going to keep going backwards and forwards with these two colors until i'm happy with the center and how it feathers out to the edges and there we go, that's the pattern I ended up settling up on. So uh, you can see we've got a nice deep blue over to the right and then it kind of, it just fades out to a green. Like I said earlier, we're not gonna be using the entire greenness for uh, the swamp, but it's better to overextend because then you can use what you want and we'll mask it off with uh, sand and other kind of grassy areas in the next step. So let's go on to that. Okay, the next step is to make some flock that you can use whatever you want but here I've got a battlefield grass green and step grass and all I'm going to do is to create a um, kind of a slightly random look I'm going to mix these two together just to create some kind of textured So we've got the dark and the light greens flowing nicely. Probably want to add a bit more of the darker green because here we are going for a swampier base. Right, so now that I've got my uh, freshly prepped mixture, we're gonna take our PVA glue again, and we are going to squeeze it on the, on the rest of the base where we want the flock to stick. So also want to kind of border off here. So that's going to be the edge of our swap. And I'm also going to stick a bead around there. So when we apply the water later on, um, it's got something that kind of holds it in. There, so that's going to be our guide for the um, for the swamp, really. And I'm just going to put some PVA glue wherever I want this to stick, and I'm going to put a few patches on here just to break it up a bit. A few there. This isn't essential; it's just a bit of fun. Okay. Let me grab an old brush and I'm just gonna spread this around here. So I need to cover everything that we don't want to be visible underneath. Done, just give the uh, the rim a wipe in case you've got any on the edges. So you don't want the flock to stick on that. Right, so we're going to get our tray or our plate or whatever we used last time just to catch any um, overspill. And we're just going to dump our mixture onto the PVA.
here we go. We're going to leave that to dry now. Um, quite a while. And then, um, yeah, we'll, re we'll return to it once the PVA is set. Okay, now that the flock is dry, uh, we're going to apply our water. What I've done to this is I've um, I sprayed it with some Munitorium varnish, hopefully to, to hold the flock on. But I've done it before we applied the water because it gives you a matte finish. But if you want, you can um, spray it with um, mo you know, a watered down PVA water or Mod Podge combo if you wanted to, to, to really stick that flock down. So now what I've got is water texture from Vallejo. And what we're going to do is we're going to squirt this water into this area that we've marked out. Optionally, what you can do is you can get, you know, your mix of of kind of grains and a bit of um, grass and throw that into the mix as well. If you wanted just to create a bit of a dirt in the, in the swamp, so I'm gonna, I might do that as we pour a bit in. So I've got my ballast from earlier. So I've never used this before, so let's see how we go. And let's pour this out. So now the um our little area that we've marked out is holding this water effect in, so I'm gonna just get a bit of dirt, throw it in there a bit. Maybe get a little bit of there now I'll do and then just carry on squirting this now and this will probably take quite a while to dry 24 to 48 hours we're going to leave that there to dry and then, uh, yeah, once that's dry, we'll come back and see how it looks. Normally, you'd be done here with the um, with the water and you just let it dry. But because we have got a more crusher and the way that we've done it is he's, I want him to be stepping into the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my model. Whilst the water effect is still wet, I'm going to place him in it so it displaces the water. Okay, so let's just change camera angle for you guys. So what I want to do is take my more crusher and I'm going to gently place him so his front fist, this one here, is on the water. So I'm going to line him up and then I'm going to drop him down. So before I do that, I'm going to put some super glue on his back three. Well, on his remaining three feet. That's on. Just going to make sure that I've got. all of his feet on and drop him in there. How does that look? Okay, that's looking good. I'm going to let that set. Um, at this stage here, you can do whatever uh, kind of other extras you want. Any other paraphernalia, so if you've got any other basing materials, skulls, uh, blood, uh, just dot that as you see fit. And that's it. That's uh, Once that water effect is dry, that will be our base done. And all that's left to do now is to mount Gordrak onto Big Teeth and make sure he's securely fastened to the base 
and add your smattering of usual basing materials and there you go. You have a mighty fine mega boss ready to stomp his way into some good scraps. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was any use to you, feel free to like and subscribe as that helps us get noticed. If you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Feel free to post your pictures on the Log Cabin Gaming Group on Facebook. Until the next time we meet, see you guys later.